those would be the reasons to begin with of why you would want to do some form of email marketing and offer a lead magnet is to give somebody an option that is beyond paying you money for coaching. You own your email list, you own those, those names, you own those addresses, and you can email those people as often as you like. If you're giving away something shit in your lead magnet, you're less likely to buy the paid thing. It's that open loop thing that you said, like, the human brain can't not know the answer. How we get over 50% open rate on our emails and why that is important. <laughs> Hey guys, we're Dan and Mike from Business and Banter and we're here to help you with your online fitness business in any way that we can possibly help. Um, I said help twice, I know, that's a bit weird. Um, so yeah, we're going to talk about open rates on emails and why emails are absolutely vital for you to grow an online fitness business um, that has longevity anyway um, and that isn't just based around an algorithm because one of the huge problems obviously with social media is that the second you try and sell anything, algorithm just kind of like plummets, your reach goes down, you mention your link in the bio, you mention anything like that, it's not always great for, for engagement and things like that. So we believe that email is a huge, huge part of your um, strategy going forward um, and should be something that you look to implement as soon as possible. But a lot of coaches don't because they don't know what the hell to do with it and they think that they need to send different type of content, that they need to have, uh, you know, I suppose systems set up and automation. So we're just going to talk through why you need to focus on email and how it's actually simpler than you think. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, it's something that I think a lot of coaches start, um, but never continue with because there's this feeling of not getting anything back. That, that tends to be a trend. Um, don't get me wrong. There's a large portion of people that um, don't do it at all, which, you know, who, who should be doing it, but there's also people that kind of do it, just don't do it very well. And it, it kind of tells off. Um, so let's start with the reasons why you should probably email market. So we'll take a step back from that because the way that you're going to get somebody on an email list will be through a lead magnet. So at the moment, a lot of coaches will probably have coaching or nothing to offer. So it's either pay me, in some cases, a thousand pounds or nothing. Do you think from a business perspective that that's a good idea? Um, I would probably say no. Um, so a lead magnet is something for free or very, very low cost in some cases that um, can be used to um, provide some free, deeper value that wouldn't come across on social media. And it identifies the lead or um, the, the the follower that might be interested in this thing or that thing or the other. Um, you can then retarget them both via email marketing and Instagram marketing based off of what they have um put their metaphorical hands up to, to receive in terms of the lead magnet because you know that that is going to be a warmer follower than just, let's just say you've got 10,000 followers. There's going to be a portion of those followers that never see any of your stuff, that never in, interact with it, never engage with it, not really interested, right? If somebody has um, opted in for your lead magnet, put their name, email address in, that's a one step closer um, in terms of warmness lead. If they're then opening your emails, they're even warmer than that if somebody's opening your emails. So it's those people that you would want to pay attention to. So those would be the reasons to begin with of why you would want to do some form of email marketing and offer a lead magnet. It's to give somebody an option that is beyond paying you money for coaching, that gives you a visibility on them. That would be the the, the initial, I guess, reason why you would want to do it. Yeah, and most coaches, like I said, it baffles me because it's it's a really easy way to identify, uh, you, you know, part of your your audience who are more likely to buy from you. And I, I just don't understand why you wouldn't want that that to have that leverage uh, essentially over other coaches, right? Is to have a list of people who are much more engaged. Um, so we talk about building followings and how you know Instagram engagement can be down and reach can be down. Instagram can not work for a day, you know, it hasn't yet, but it, you know, it has hours where it can be down. Um, and this is a way where you you know you own your email list, you own those those names, you own those addresses, uh, and you can email those people as often um, as, as, you, as you like. You can kind of say what you want as well. The reason that I like email, I think that it works really, really well is that you can almost give like a behind the scenes look. You can almost say things that you maybe can't say on Instagram or as freely as you can say on Instagram. You can tell stories, you can go deeper into your personal life and, and it feels like you have a better connection with people. But one of the main problems that coaches have is they don't know what to write. They think that email needs to just be another platform that they talk about how to get more protein in, how to eat more carbs. I would suggest that it's even 
even more so than Instagram, you need to post your opinions and your own journey, your own thoughts and feelings around stuff. So a lot of our emails, for example, are our view of the world, our view of other mentors, our view of advice that's given in the industry, our advice around what we would do in these situations and what we found works more so on Instagram, because we know that those people are more engaged. They are going to read those emails. They are going to go all the way to the bottom of them. Um, and it provides a, an opportunity for us to kind of give a, uh, say behind the scenes, but almost like, I don't want to say X-rated because that sounds ridiculous as well. But you know what I mean? It's almost like that deeper stuff that we really believe in and have opinions on. Um, and, and when people read that, we know that those people that are, are engaged in that are more likely to buy from us when we then do say, hey, look, we've got this thing and it's going to be going to be really good for you based on all the stuff you've been in, you know reading about us before and our opinions on stuff. We've provided a solution to those, to those problems a little bit more. Obviously, on Instagram and social media, you have to kind of go with a bit more of a controversial view, a bit more opinionated to grab people's attention. Whereas with email, you kind of know you've got their attention. They've signed up to hear more anyway. So you do have a little bit more buy-in from them to read along longer email from you um, and, and sort of indulge in some of your more longer form content as well. So a lot of coaches, if they have a podcast or they have a YouTube channel, or whatever, again, if that's what you want to do, it's a great way for you to kind of push your audience to that as well. Because again, you're not at the mercy of an algorithm with links and all that sort of stuff, which can be a, a pain in the ass. So one of the reasons we get such a high open rate on emails is our subject lines are always geared around an opinion we have on a certain topic. And people can't wait to hear that because they know that we don't hold back on that channel. It's, um, it's just knowing... I mean, how to open loop in general with, with things. So when I started this video, if you look at what I said, it's um, how we get over 50%, what was it? How we get over 50% open rates on our emails and why that's important. So it's showing that we are doing something that maybe you would want to do. And then we're also telling you why it's important that we do it. So the open loop in the video, the title is equivalent to the subject line. So if you had a subject line, for coaches that were like that, um, it would probably work. Again, I've kind of spoke about this kind of content in terms of like carousels um, at the moment that, that kind of work in a, in a similar way. It, it, essentially, it's just learning how to, to use a hook and to, to create an open loop. Um, it, for example, it could be, um, I don't know, maybe this is not a particularly good email um, sentence, but it could be, um, and Andy lost 14 pounds in January, here's three things we changed. Like something along those lines, right? Probably not the best, probably not the best in terms of an email because um, nobody's really that bothered about Andy. It's probably more applicable online. But it's just learning how to create a captivating heading that makes you want to then read the rest of it. Whereas three tips of how to lose fat isn't a captivating heading anymore. That's not mysterious. It's the same shit as what everybody else is posting. It's now thinking outside the box and doing it in different ways. Um, because that's what everybody does. It's three tips on that, five tips on how to get your protein in. Okay, well, everybody does that. That is not an open loop. That's just you saying the same as, as everything else. So when you are writing an email, make sure that when you read it back, you would want to read it. Like That's the key thing, I think, with, with people is think how many emails you get on a daily basis from people and they try and use these these fancy subject lines and you kind of know that it's clickbaity. You know, you know, it's, it's, it's something that you're maybe not really kind of like looking at and like, oh, I can't be really that, but you click on it anyway. You know, you see these things and it comes up with something and you're like, uh, it's that open loop thing that you said, like the human brain can't not know the answer. It's like if we put out a subject line, it was like um, three mistakes nearly all online coaches make with their Instagram. You're going to want to open that and just to check that you're not doing it. You might not read the whole email and that sort of stuff. So there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can go down that route and see if that works for your open rate. The route that we take is being a little bit more controversial with our opinions. So for example, like I put out one today. We'll see what the open rate is going to be. It was uh, Eddie Abu is now a business mentor. I believe people are going to open that because they go, what? They're going to go, eh? what's that about? And then again, the story there is about his content, all this sort of stuff, why maybe you should listen to him, whatever. Um, in, and it's trying to find your way of doing things. Again, like the reason that I, find, I think coaches struggle with this is because it is very much, it has to be unique to you and your style of content. There isn't a template. There isn't, there's some subject lines that are kind of good subject lines to use. But I feel like with email, you've got even more opportunity to show your personality and to, to put that across in copy. Tell funny stories. Like again, if Mike was to tell some of his funny stories, he had to have loads of open loops at the start of them. Um, you know, you can tell his Amsterdam story, for example, um, which now you're curious about and I'm not going to tell you about it. And all of a sudden you're like, well, what happened in Amsterdam? What did Mike do in Amsterdam? You're creating a story in your own head Next video. that you don't know the answer to yet. But if we did that at the start of the email and then we said, you know, it was a cold, it was a cold night in Amsterdam. It was about four degrees, November the 22nd. I'm sat there uh, in this scenario, I'm in this cafe. I'm sat with my best mate, Dan, wasn't me. Um, 
and I'll tell you how it went down in a second. And then he went into, and he started with, the problem with online coaches is that they're too scared to share their stories. They're too scared to do this. And then finished off the story, you'd read the whole thing. Mm. And that's what we're talking about. It's, it's, but you wouldn't, if, if we just left it as an open loop, that was a bit more generic, then you wouldn't want to read it. But because that's quite specific about an Amsterdam story, again, we know what happens in Amsterdam to some degree. So you're already thinking, oh, what can he have done? I wonder if he'll do anything mm. naughty. He didn't. He did. Did he? Who knows? Um, you already are curious straight away. And it's trying to do that. And like I said, there's no real structure to it. There's no real kind of like templates you can use. It comes down to the way you are and, and as a human as to how you would do that. But that is one of the secrets that good copywriters use. I'm not talking about the ones that do 50% flash sale and like, like fucking hell, we've all, you know, it's like boring. Everyone sees that. This is about creating relationships and connections with people so that when you do do a CTA for your coaching, people are bought into you because they like reading your emails more than they like reading about three protein tips for busy professionals. Yeah. Like, ag again, um, I could say, um, I went to a Thai massage parlor. Here's what happened. Again, the re the reason why I'm using Thai massage parlor kind of, it kind of alludes to the fact that, okay, something dodgy's happened. Okay, what what is it? And then you leave that open and then finish with closing it. And you, you, you used to see all the big influencers do the same thing as well. Like, back in the day, Matt Does Fitness would do like, uh, I ate KFC for 24 hours. Here's what happened. Nothing happened. Like, he's just getting you to watch the video. Nothing happened. He just ate KFC. He's telling you what's happened, but it's making you think that something happened. I, I let my um, robotic Hoover select my food. Um, here's what happened. Yeah, nothing. The robot just selected the food. Um, but it's the open loop. It's the clickbait. It's the, and again, in, you know, um, creators like that are going to, you know, to, to some degree, probably be testing um, what 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 headings are working better than others. And if you've seen somebody do the same thing three, four, five, six times, well, that's working, obviously, isn't it? It's getting more views. It's the same. It's the same principles we're applying. Again, I did one the other day, an email where it said something like, um, "We just earned fifty million pounds," and then I said, "Makes me feel sick writing that," but it got you to read it, didn't it? Like, because we didn't earn fifty million pounds, we earned fifty million pounds cumulatively for our clients across last year. That's the that's the principle of it, right? It, it's the it's the little. You need to be okay making it clickbait. That's the first thing you've got to get people to open it. But I would I would argue that you've got to go one step back, even with a lead magnet. Is that your lead magnet's got to be got to be worthwhile? If you've got a fucking dreadful lead magnet like a calorie calculator, don't expect people to read the emails because it's you're giving them garbage. So when I when I look at email marketing in general and y the use of lead magnets, and again, people will probably go oh do, do I need to do that I've heard about it. do I need to do that Th look at look at every other business every other business whether you know it or not probably uses a lead magnet um a supplement company will drop in um a packet of pre-workout with your current order that's a lead magnet that's getting you to try something but you've not got the whole thing so that you buy the whole thing um supermarkets you'll try a tester of the cheese as you're walking around that's a lead magnet um going in and test driving a car that's a lead magnet. Going in and be able to use the iPhone. For free. why do they, why can you get go in there and use the iPhone? It's the lead magnet. You can't take it home and use it, but you're trying it for free. You're giving some value in terms of oh, I can see how this is going to benefit me. I'm more likely to buy it. If you're giving away something shit in your lead magnet, you're less likely to buy the paid thing. Because if I went in and used the iPhone, it was it was crashing all the time. It was clunky. It just wasn't great. Do you think I would buy it? No. Think about that when it comes to the lead magnet. If I opened up a packet of pre-workout um, as a tester and it tasted awful and didn't mix, it was all lumpy, would I buy the tub? No. Think about that with your lead magnets. So to, so to go one step back from that to get people to read your uh, emails, you've got to be giving them something that's half decent to begin with. Otherwise, they're just not going to open the rest of the, the, the shit that you're giving them. And again, a step further back than that, it's got to be coming from, you've got to be able to show personality in your content for people want to hear the more X-rated things from you or the, the in-depth stuff. You've got to have some personality. If you're, um, if you're boring and bland and not really giving out any advice, there's no surprise to me that you've only got 17 people on your email list, friends and family. Like, if you are somewhat controversial and people like hearing your opinions or what you're doing and you're giving away gold dust then people are going to want to listen to the the, the more in-depth stuff. Me sat here in a coffee shop thinking about this. I've just seen that happen. Here's my thoughts on that. Here's some rants about the industry. Here's what I did yesterday. Like, people are going to want to hear more than that. And another pushback that you get from a coach would be, 
Yeah, I, I did it for a bit, but nothing really happened. Don't expect it to happen. Don't expect people to flock in and start applying for coaching from your emails or responding back. It's a no like, and trust builder so that they will reach out inevitably through Instagram or if you've got a type form application, which mm. you shouldn't have, by the way. Um, they will reach out through that. So I spoke to Rowan yesterday on our, on our monthly call. Uh, and he said, so he's got about 150 clients or something like, uh, 150 people on his on his email list, right? Um, so not a huge email list, any stretch. He said that 90% of him have bought from him this year. After like, so he's just sold out his uh, his group coaching and he's up to a record high um, number of clients. And he's gone back through and he said that the majority of them have eventually come into coaching in some form, whether it was one-to-one or whether it was um, into the group. And I was like, that's why you're doing it. Like, that's why you're doing it. So what does it tell you? We'll get more people on that list then because it's quite clearly working. Also with that as well, like I, we've seen it ourselves. We've done giveaways. We've done these sorts of things. And, and again, they're the ones that usually unsubscribe quickest. They're the ones that, so, you know, there's also this element of it where it's like, yeah, we want to build an email list. And there are things we can do. We can do good giveaways. We can kind of force people's hand a little bit. But coaches get really downbeat when they kind of release their lead magnet. And within two weeks, they only get 20, 30 people. I'm like, well, yeah, you need to talk about this lead magnet for six months. Yeah. Like, don't expect them just to see it once and go, oh my God, this is the thing that's missing in my life. I must give this man my email address. No, you need to be able to talk about it for six months straight. We talked about ours. We need to get better at talking about some of our things, but we don't need to change them. They're still very relevant to people. They're still very, very useful to people. Um, I think that's one of the biggest problems that coaches have is that they they feel like, because they didn't get 100 people sign up straight away. Oh, it's shit. Oh, it's, I need to change it. Oh, it's not good enough. No, that means that something in your content is not quite good enough and not hitting. But Rowan's example there is a prime example of exactly why you need an email list, because people buy from email lists. They they down they they sign up for email lists, but with the intention to buy from people. That's one thing that that signifies is like I'm prepared for you to sell to me because I've signed up to hear more from you. It's literally what they're doing. Whereas Instagram, I would argue they're not expecting you to sell to them because they might have signed up for your funny content, your great spoof videos, and then you go sell to them. Oh, I wasn't here for that. I was here for your fun videos. Whereas the email list is a way to funnel people into, well, I'm going to sell to you on this email list at some point alongside all that other funnier stuff. I think that's the bit that, that you need to remember. So it's, it's definitely a slow burn with the email list, but it pays off as, as mm. you just said there, Rowan. Like, you know, out of that, what's that? He's had 135 people fucking paying money. Mm. Like off the back of 150 people. Like you don't get those stats on Instagram. In fact, it's, you do well on Instagram to get them the other way around to get 10% of your followers to buy from you. Mm -hmm. would be incredible incredible numbers and on email you're getting 90% and that is not out of the ordinary that's a high number but it's not out of the ordinary I could I bet you we could look at a decent number of other people and they'd have similar style numbers of group coaching of all this other stuff um, further down the line so do not overlook an email list and the, the reason that coaches do turn those about it is oh it's just another thing to do isn't it yeah it is yeah it's another thing that's to do to get you more money and more clients and better business what a shame it's another thing for you to do yeah it is get better at it it'll pay, pay for itself um, well, several times over, as we just alluded to, Brian. Yeah, it is another thing. Um, interestingly enough, just before we started recording this, I saw a, a quote by Alex Ormosi that said, a lot of people want more recurring revenue, but don't want to do more recurring work. It's the same thing. It's like, okay, if, if you want more, if you want your business to grow, you need to be doing more than what you're currently doing, don't you? You can't keep expecting to do the same thing and, and just grow magically. You can't expect to post four times on Instagram and expect that to grow you. You're going to need these different avenues. You're going to need to identify the, the warmest leads. You're going to need to retarget. You're going to need to be able to uh, create a launch and open up some spaces. You're going to need to be able to do that. And email marketing is the way that you do it. So how to get a good email open rate would be make bet better content so you're getting more people onto that list. Create a great lead magnet so that people actually enjoy opening your stuff. Use open loops good subject lines and um, a, a, a bit of a, a tip that we got from our um, um, friend and, and previous copywriter Chris was read it read it yourself all the way down and then the best line that you come to where you go that's a good line delete everything before and then just start from that and kind of reorder it that would be a, a decent tip um, and forget about what you think you should be writing about because that's a common objection it's uh, I didn't really know what to write I don't know what I'm writing I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing with these emails and when we say you can write whatever, it means you can write whatever. I could literally send an email out today goes, hey, mate, did you still need help with some coaching? Um, 
hey mate, just checking in, how are things? I could literally send that. It doesn't need to be about tips on nutrition, tips on training, tips on doesn't this, tips on that. It doesn't always need a CT, it doesn't always need a bringing back rounds of fitness or nutrition. It can just be a fun story. It could be anything. <laughs> fun story, and uh, uh, an analogy. Um, what I watched yesterday, what I did at the weekend, an interaction that me and Dan have had, a rant about this, something that I'm doing within my training, golf being crap. It can be anything, because the people that have chosen to be there are probably your biggest fans. And showing more of yourself is always going to be a good thing for them. Yeah. And the other thing as well, just to finish on this point, is that most coaches, all, all they want is to stand out. 90% of online coaches aren't using email lists. They're not sending emails. So your competition are not doing this. They're not sending good emails. They're not doing thinking about it. So if you want to stand out, start sending emails. It's a way to reach your most engaged audience of other people who may follow other coaches, but their other coaches aren't sending emails. They're not reaching them on another platform. They're not engaging them on another platform. Believe me, if you want to stand out and be unique, that's one way to do it because most coaches watching this, too lazy to try and start it, run out of ideas and will not give it a year. They give up after a week because it didn't work. So if you want to be unique, you want to stand out, that is the way to do it. And I promise you your business will flourish because of it versus not doing it. If you want to get on our email list, um, message us on Instagram. Um, let's just pick one of them. BB29. 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 You'll get a video about the 29 biggest mistakes that online coaches make, and you'll also get added to our email list automatically, and you'll see the sorts of emails that we send. So if you want help looking at subject lines, how we structure stuff, jump on that. Question a bit.